so in this video, we're looking at the coefficient of correlation. That's r. That's the variable that we use to represent this quantity. Um, we have the formula here expressed. Let's describe it in words first, because I think that's more instructive. r measures the strength of the linear relationship between the variables x and y. So the first thing I want to remember is it measures the strength of the linear relationship. So it doesn't talk about other kinds of relationship, just the linear relationship, right? So x and y may be related in another way. R doesn't speak to that, right? It only measures the strength of the linear relationship between the two variables. All right, now let's look at the formula a little bit. Um, of course, the mechanics of how to work out the formula we'll cover in the problem videos. But you know, these quantities, I just want to speak about some important aspects to them. First of all, you, know, you can see it's comprised of three sum of square values, right? So you have the sum of squares for x and y, the sum of squares for x, times the sum of square for y, all under the radical here in the denominator. So notice that this one is the only one that can be um, negative, right? So normally the sum of squared values are all positive. This one can never be negative. This one can never be negative. That's actually a good thing because it's in a radical over here at the bottom, right? And we need to make sure that the product here is positive so that we can take the square root and get a real value, right? So the sum of square for x, y here, this one can be negative or be positive. Now, if it's negative, that means r will be negative. If it's positive, it means r will be positive. And so remember, r discusses the linear relationship between x and y. So if r is positive, it means there's a positive linear relationship. If r is negative, it means there's a negative linear relationship. Aside from that, then we want to look at this scale here to help interpret r. And essentially, what we're going to see here is that you know, there's a possibility that r could be 0, right? If it was 0, it would mean that there essentially is no linear relationship between x and y. Be careful there. We're talking about linear relationship. We didn't say no relationship. We said no linear relationship, right? So there's no linear relationship between x and y. If it were to go all the way up to 1, that's its absolute maximum value it could be. That would mean there's a perfect positive linear relationship between them. A perfect positive relationship only would occur in a deterministic scenario where you have a simple equation like you know, y is equal to, I don't know, you know, say 7x plus 4 or something, you know, where it would be exactly determined there's no error term, in other words. That means that you give x, you get a precise y, and there's never any, you know, kind of uh, same, same x that gives you a different y value. So that usually does not happen in the world of real data where you're using a regression scenario. That would happen in an algebra class. It would not happen in a statistics class, typically. So 1 is sort of the, uh, you know, the perfect scenario, the idealized scenario that you usually would never achieve. But any number close to 1 is going to indicate really strong positive correlation, right? So say, for example, if r was equal to 0.998, that would be a very strong positive linear relationship between x and y. All right, now, from there, you know, you go down, and of course, we can get all the way down to 0, but all those represent positive linear relationships, and the strength of it is determined by how close that is to 1, right? The higher it is, the closer towards 1, the more strong it is. Now, on the negative end, we have the same idea, right? Negative 1 is perfect negative correlation. Um, that is not going to happen again, typically, in a stats class, but you might get something like minus 0.976 you know, or something. That's a good, strong negative correlation, right? And again, so. As we go closer to zero, of course, the relationship gets weaker and weaker and weaker until we arrive at zero, where essentially there is no linear relationship between them. All right, so that's it. Um, the terminology coefficient of correlation, remember the strength of the linear relationship here, you can also refer to that as the correlation between the two variables. Um, try to think of correlation as essentially that the variables um, sort of appear together, right? So you might say smoking and lung cancer are correlated. That means that people who smoke tend to also end up with lung cancer. So the two variables appear together. But one thing you want to be cautious about is the idea that, you know, essentially one causes the other. Don't make that assumption, right? Just because x and y are correlated or they appear together, it doesn't mean that x causes y or y causes x. We can't say that for sure, right? So essentially when you have something like smoking and lung cancer, you would have to try to figure out why it is that they appear together. It could be a third variable, some lurking variable you're not aware of is actually causing them to appear together, right? Maybe there's something about, um, you know, maybe there's an actual genetic aspect to people's um, personalities or, or whatever that makes them crave cigarette smoking, and that same gene also makes it more likely that they get lung cancer. So maybe that's the explanation between the link. Could be, right? Of course, um, that's not what we believe to be true, because we actually, you know, 
have biopsy people who have died and seen that their lungs are all black and unhealthy and we think that smoking is causing the damage, right? So uh, lung cancer seems to be linked to smoking because of the effects that smoke has on the lungs. But again, you know, correlation is not causation. So make sure that when you interpret R, you don't say, well, gee, the value is 998, that means X causes Y. No, it just means that they're highly correlated. They appear together consistently. Okay, so that's essentially it. Um, the other thing, of course, you want to remember is that when you interpret this, um, a positive relationship means the variables move together in the same direction. So that means as one increases, the other increases. So for example, you might say something like, um, you know, the hours you study correlates to your grade that you earn. So more hours of study, higher grades, they both go up at the same time, they both go down at the same time. A negative relationship means they move in opposite directions. So for example, that might be something like, um, the uh, reliability of your automobile versus its age. As the car gets older, the reliability comes down, right? So we have a scenario where as one goes up, the other variables goes down. That's a negative relationship. So when things move together, it's positive. When things move away from one another as they go apart, that's negative. So two classic examples, hours study, higher grades, right? They both move in the same direction. Lower hours of study, lower grades, right? Talk about a negative relationship, something like the age of your vehicle, its reliability, right? They go opposite directions. As the age goes up, the reliability goes down. Or as the age is younger, the reliability is higher, right? So they go in opposite directions. Okay, so that's about it. Um, we'll have the God of Example videos that show us how to actually um, calculate this quantity and interpret it in the context of a real problem.